Welcome back, guys. We got the level 80 with hero talents, Guardian Druid, Druid of the Claw, Mage Tower. This was a couple days ago after I level capped my Druid, and then I played a couple other tunes, so not very fresh in my mind. But we're going to point out a few things that I think might help. And after the fight analysis, I'll talk about consumables, enchants, gems, gear you can get, etc. But I do want to stress that this fight was completed with only Mark of the Wild. No consumables, no gems, enchants, and just the leveling gear I got while playing War Within on the second and third day. Strongly recommend going in there with just your self buff and any kind of flask and potion and drums. And if you don't want to do that, that's not required. That said, there are a few quick and easy options to greatly increase your power in the tower, and we'll talk about those afterwards. With timestamps below if you just want to jump right to that. And just as a reminder, I'm starting the fight in stealth and hitting the boss with rake. This will stun the boss and put a nasty dot on him, but then I'm going to kind of go about my business. I am playing with fluid form, which allows you to auto cat form when you press the rake button. You might see me do that here and there. Not gameplay I'm used to, but we're getting there. Talent tree, I will discuss that afterwards as well. And one thing that I always recommend when you're doing something like this is just find out how much damage everything does. Uh, getting knocked off does infinite damage, and the Mind Rend that Varus cast does 1.5k, and so you'll generally see me trying to move out at 5k health. Any less than that's likely a mistake, but again, to combat that, we're using Bark Skin and Matted Fur it gives you a nice Absorb Shield, which is not influenced by your max health value. So, anyway, here we go. And of course, we're playing Incap Roar and Knockback. And you see that Ravage, your first Mangle in combat will proc you a free Ravage. By free Ravage, I mean a free conversion to Ravage. You still spend the resource on it. But good to otherwise note that all of the Maul talents also benefit Ravage. And you can see here I'm at under 5k health, but I could take two Mind Rends here. I do have my Absorb Shield up just from the talent that grants it to you via Maul and thrash and see we're going back in trying to be a little bit aggressive i i find that i often spend too much time out but you can also refresh your thrash stacks without even getting into the puddle and again eyeballs are one to two moon fires if you want to get rid of them very very quickly you got to double tap and if you get lucky enough to have Velen tanking an infernal he can do that it does not do a lot of damage to him I blow this thing up. Boom! 5.1k. That just instas the ad. If you're next to one, you might as well, right? But, again, you're going to see me collect them. Sometimes I might even let them hit Velen for a little bit. You kind of got to get a feel for how long you can personally tank them. And it's basically four or five stacks is the most. And then I'm going to in-cap Roar because they're going to start casting. Or I'm running away or into an orb or something like that. You don't really want to mess with the ads. Though, Velen certainly can take a couple melees not too many and you see even without pressing i do press the bark skin here but even without that just the absorb shield i have built up via ursox remembrance i think is the name of the town and i in cap roar varus because i didn't want to run back in kick and refresh my stacks but you see i group up the ads and i just get to the orb and then we're kiting we're running you got all the time in the world to get distance from the ads and really, the Moonfire's on top of one Ravage uh, is plenty. Yeah, just had to go back in for that one. One thing I would recommend trying to get comfortable with is not dealing with the eyeball knockbacks, like by killing them and just like either using the boost intentionally or just getting close enough to where it's not going to be harmful. I'm a little further away from the little further away from the orb than I want to be right now, and I don't in-cap roar just because I was going to orb right away, but again, that's a little dicey. Ads are down. We in-cap roar to get the Varus cast, and now Cruel comes down. Couple things. Cruel can just melee you to death. It's unlikely to happen, especially if you have the talent that builds absorb shields off of maul damage, and frankly, you, you should. There exists a few additional scenarios where you just die to damage, and that's kind of like cruel damage, and an Infernal actually gets a stomp that hits you. This is why I'm always moving away. It's not just a knockback from the stomp, but it, on top of like kind of stuff that will almost kill you, is enough to sometimes kill you. So you got to be cool. I'm usually always moving, and 
Additional benefits of that are just leaving those puddles kind of far away from each other and not on top of Ellen. Uh, they won't necessarily do damage to him, but they will make your life difficult trying to get to orbs, which do spawn near Velen. Also, in a better world, I have Incarn up, but it is what it is. If you don't use Incarn, you're going to push after three minutes, and if you do, you're just going to be holding for damage. So whatever you're comfortable with, but in general, I if I've just taken out the ads and I can push to Cruel, I'm going to do it right then. Uh, just know that if you're going to get that first Annihilate and you don't have Incarn up, you're going to want a Bark Skin because it'll be close enough. The first one might take you out if you're just in bear form, and, and I'd recommend just making sure you can iron for several times as each Annihilate comes out. It's not something that I think you have to maintain the entire time. You can largely mostly spend on malls, but when that second, third, God forbid, fourth Annihilate comes out, you're going to want to have Iron First on top of the recommended cooldowns. And while I don't use it as a lined up defensive cooldown, Rage of the Sleeper is a 20% DR as on top of the offensive benefits. Either way, here we go. You're just going to see me kiting. Getting distance from Cruel helps for when he jumps because you have a little bit more reaction time to get out of that puddle. But he does seem to be a little bit more Void Bolt spammy. And Void Bolt's his nobody's in melee range of me penalty where he will nuke down Velen. And even Corvos can die, by the way. You can get him killed with the, uh, the add AoE cast. Don't do that. But here we go. We're just backing away from that Infernal. It's about to, you know, come back. And we know he is going to jump, and then we're going to annihilate. And so I'm backing out of that puddle, keeping my face towards him. We kick that Twisted Reflection. Twisted Reflections is a debuff that goes on you, which will heal Cruel every time he melees you. It can be taken off if you run into a Velen Orb. So all is not lost, but I would just kick it. If you do anything to prevent Twisted Reflections from being cast aside from Skull Bashing it, he will recast it. So don't use an Orb, don't use Incap Roar unless you have to because Skull Bash isn't up for some weird reason. Maybe you used it for movement. But Skull Bash, and then he will not recast. If you interrupt his cast enough time with non-Skull Bashes to where he gets to the next Annihilate, he might not recast it, but, but what are we doing at that point? Anyway, you're going to see me continue kiting away from the Infernals. The ads are largely going to come to me through self-healing threat, but it's not guaranteed, so you just got to pay attention. Ads are coming up now, making sure you're keeping Mangle. All right. Number one button is Maul, number two button is Mangle, number three is Thrash. Hit him in that order. And you're going to see Incap Roar here. That stops all of those casts at the same time. It even gets Cruel, so it gives you a little bit of uh, room for him. He's going to second Annihilate me. I'm going to have Survival Instincts because I don't have anything else. If I had just Barkskin available, I would do that with a bunch of Iron Furs, but, you know, but we didn't. Barkskin is back up now, and... And I run out of melee just to get around the stomp, and he void bolt him, like, and it doesn't do too much, but, you know, uh, probably does ramping damage. And he's done. I mean, I'm gonna incap roar the adds, ooh, 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 back away from the stomp, and we're just pressing maul. And the third annihilate's gonna come in, and I got survival instincts, we're gonna press that. Also worth noting that if you don't have matted fur, survival instincts will not be enough to survive that third annihilate because again it gives you that absorb shield pushes your health a little bit more maybe it is but you know hey just uh, pointing out the additional usefulness of that talent so hopefully that's enough to chop up into something sensible we'll leave group because if you don't leave group then you get ported to dal and we don't want that we don't want, we're not going to dal literally just getting talked about being in the mage tower by my buddies. Okay, so again, Druid of the Claw is great. Elune's chosen. I'm just gonna say this right now. Nobody wants to press. Nobody wants to press Lunar Beam. I don't want to press Lunar Beam. It's clunky, and there's a couple uh, neat parts to this talent tree. Like Thrash becomes arcane damage, and then you get arcane damage increase, which is cool because Moonfire and all that. But frankly, if you press Ravage once. You're going to have way more fun than you ever will in the Elune's Chosen Tree. In my opinion, it's probably better for Boomy, so moving on. Um, there's a few choice notes here. Basically three. Those are the only things I'll really talk about. Uh, an auto attack speed increase when you Ravage. Or an agility and armor increase when you Ravage. So you're going to go agility and armor increase. 
Then there's, uh, this is actually a decision, which isn't too bad. Magic damage reduction, swipe and mangle damage increase, and then the functionality of being able to frenzied regen while in cat form for energy, which is actually pretty cool. It means you can shift into cat form and double tap it while you're running out. I basically just took this for the DR and for the fact that wild powered surge didn't really seem like it was... Listen, I don't know if the stacks uh, fall off when you shift out of bear form or whatever, but it seemed like I never met that condition. So what are you going to do? Maybe they reset when you go into cat form voluntarily. Who's to say? And then you have um, Strike for the Heart and Tear Down the Mighty. This pulverized cooldown reduction is probably enough for it to be up for every Annihilate, which is super cool because Pulverize is a 35% damage reduction you know, to the bear from the thing you cast it on. In addition to that, it's just a bunch of passive damage increases and some, you know, speed increase, whatever. A final talent, I guess I will talk about. When you're incarned, basically all of your buttons that you would press can potentially proc this Ravage. When you have it, it is the number one button. Just press it. Just press it. I'm going to shrink down just so we can see the left talent tree real quick. Uh, things that are cool that I didn't use, rip is one of them, but this is just more damage. You're shifting into cap form consistently to press rake, then you can also capitalize by having rip, which is just more damage. Again, I didn't use it too much. You can also lose points elsewhere and and pick up maim, which is a single target stun that you can cast in cap form. That's, that's some higher level stuff that may or may not be super cool, but you would probably take improved bark skin out. I didn't use it in this video, but I previously had kind of enjoyed using Cyclone on the Infernals when they come out. It just keeps them stationary for a little bit and allows you to naturally get some distance without feeling too rushed about it. Uh, Typhoon Knockback is just, it's great for Varus when you need to stop something he's doing and you cannot go into melee to do it. Uh, again, in Cap Roar also serves that purpose now that the puddle is smaller and Bark skin talents that I do need to point out are oak skin and a reinforced fur. Those combined put an additional 20% DR on bark skin, as well as, you know, iron fur and uh, survival instincts. Highly recommend if you're going to use my defensive order recommendation to have both of those talents. Heart of the Wild, again, is just passive damage, 20% increased damage to your Moonfire. And frankly, while you're bloodlusted, that's more damage than nothing. So, hey, why not? You could probably drop Lore of the Grove, but Moonfire is a lot of your damage, a lot of your sustained damage. Less now that we have access to Ravage, but it's still a good amount of damage. I'm not sure there are any surprises on the right-hand side here. Double charges of survival instincts, kind of bypassing stuff that I don't really think is too necessary innate resolve that frenzied regen just i don't like playing with the regrowth talent especially solo you might as well just press a button you can't accidentally unform yourself with and this layered main decision is pretty much just a product of trying to get all of the mangle and thrash damage talents that we can take fury of nature you could probably take points out of here because you do have access to this node from your berserk talent but 20% arcane damage, even though it's less damage proportionally than it used to. Hey, what, a, what else are we doing, right? And then just a couple things about the thrash talents. Rend and tear, each stack of thrash reduces damage to you by 2% and increases your damage to them by 2%. This is mostly about the damage reduction for me. And also allows access to thrash and maul, grant you an absorb shield for 25% of damage dealt. This is why you see a persistent absorb shield on me for like, you know... My health bar, I don't know how much it is. Incarn is absolutely critical. I would always recommend it. I would also recommend trying not to play with the follow-up talent, Ursox Guidance. Basically, if you can just make sure that you get the full use of Incarn on Cruel, then you can either not use it on Varus or use it on Varus and wait it out. I felt like the point was well-placed anywhere else. Also, Moonless Knight, this is huge single target damage. You definitely want to make sure you're taking this. What I would say is actually kind of optional is here is Twin Moonfire, but I really like that cleave for the adds. And of course, in addition to the, the Thrash talents, we're definitely taking the Thrash has 20% increased chance to proc and two Thrash stacks can stack. Also note that if you're playing Pulverize, 
that now only consumes two stacks of thrash, meaning your five stack will allow you to comfortably pulverize and not, you know, nobody likes pulverize, right? That might be worse than Lunar Beam. And if you are feeling a little extra squishy, you could realistically take Twin Moonfire and put it into Moonfire, grant you 5% DR, and then you could try to pull that point from somewhere else. I really wouldn't recommend it. I think 10% DR isn't required if you're only getting three or four Annihilates and certainly isn't required for the sustained durability required throughout the fight, as that's mostly about not messing up your health pool with debuff stacks. But yeah, if you see anything funky in here, oh yeah, also Wild Charge. I'm a Tiger Dash kind of guy, but uh, it's hard not to do Wild. I, I will do Tiger Dash on every spec except for Guardian. And especially here, this is your number one knockback tool. With Skull Bash being your second one. Don't get knocked back. Now, additional things you can do to give yourself a better chance. Kind of sorted by how little time investment it requires. So the best flasks are still going to be the greater flasks from the Najatar patch 8.2. The Druid one is going to be greater flask of the currents. Pretty sure this comes out to like 70 or so agility in the tower. Most main stat you can get from a potion is going to be the superior battle potions. That's from the same Najatar patch 8.2. Uh, this comes out to, I think it's 150 main stat. Pretty sure any version of Lust Drums will work in the tower. Best food buff, to my knowledge, still Boralus Blood Sausage comes out to 39 main stat. That doesn't get squished in the tower, pretty sure. Pretty sure all of the augment runes either give you 11 or 7 main stat. Just buy the cheap ones, pop them on. And actually, if you're in for throwing another 1 to 2k... <laughs> Down for a lot of main stat, the dual layered armor kit and stormbound armor kits give you 80-ish and 120-ish main stat. Whereas you're going to zone into the challenge with 380. That's kind of an easy win. Kind of lastly, without changing your gear, there are three main stat gems. The Kraken's Eye of Agility, the Leviathan's Eye of Agility, and the Saber's Eye of Agility, which give you 19, 19, and 23 intellect. That is not squished in the tower. But even before those three gems, that's kind of where I would draw the line on my initial recommendations. I would just go in with drums, potion, flask. And then, you know, if you're doing that, you might as well get an augment rune and a food buff. That said, if you're looking to get some old gear to give yourself even more of an edge, basically you're just looking for sockets. I wouldn't really mess around with trinkets too much. Just get some main stat trinkets, but sockets on anything else is ideal. And while there is a spectrum on how good socketed gear is, it's all going to be an upgrade over just walking in there with your base dragonflight stuff with the exception of like legs because you can put 120 main stat on that with like a current enchant right so you know kind of two ways to go about it pandaria raids have the worst socketed gear that you can farm but it drops in abundance and you can run four difficulties and it reset i mean might not reset daily anymore but it did during remix but it does have more severely diminished main stat than say the socketed gear from burning crusade burning crusade has a lot of double and triple socketed items that you can just shove even not the best gems in the game and and still have a significant increase in power over just your standard gear. After the Leviathan, Saber, and Kraken's Eye gems, the best scaling ones, which don't scale down at all, are going to be the Queen's Garnets. And you can see they're quite expensive. They give you plus eight main stat, but there are a variety of different options for plus six main stat gems that will outfit any socketed gear you get to be better than your standard walking into the tower, you know, no extra stuff gear. Additionally, you're likely able to put a better enchant on it. The kind of one exception to this is the Dragonflight Necklace, which you can add three sockets into, which you can even get at a sub 320 item level, meaning you can put a legacy enchant on it. Mark of the Trained Soldiers, 14 Mastery, useless for druids, but you can still get like seven haste, seven crit. I don't think you can get verse on that, but... While the Burning Crusade gear turns out to be a little bit better, it's much more difficult to farm. Way fewer drop chances, way less gear is actually dropped on each attempt. There are different instances that are all over BC, have different lockouts. If you're looking for an imperfect set that's going to kind of be quick and you can shove a bunch of cheap gems into and it'd still be better off, go to Mr. Pandaria, Throne of Thunder, Siege of Orgrimmar. You'll have a piece of gear in every slot after those. Don't use any of the trinkets. I think that's actually it, guys. I do want to emphasize, 
No grinding required. Get in there, try it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, um, but it's certainly doable. Also heard something about the current feast giving non-diminished main stat, like 400 main stat. I don't have access to the feast yet while I'm doing some other stuff. If that's true, great. I'm not sure that's going to be too intended. I know 120 main stat on legs might make you think uh, 400 main stat on a feast is, is something that's intended, but I, I kind of doubt it. But if the feast is given 400, just know there's like a a non-zero percent chance that Blizz could be like, oh, you get, you know, you're doing something funky. I say non-zero because I do mean non-zero and I don't even mean as high as 1%, but uh, I don't know, right? But as I said, we got all the tanks leveled and we got the alts strapped with double gathering professions. So we're, we're looking good. The empires we're building up. Maybe we'll do a video about professions. Let me know if you guys want to see anything about that. I've already got a prop paladin uh, video in the works, meaning I have the kill. I just have to do this part, which is frightening and hard. And we'll get in there on the remainder of the tank specs as well, at which point we'll start branching out to probably DPS specs from the tank classes and maybe healer specs from the tank classes. And we'll kind of go down the list as I level up the tunes. But I want to thank you guys for watching. If there's anything I can clear up, ask me in the comments. Let me know what classes you want to see in the tower next. And if you have any news, criticisms, grievances, etc. Thanks guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like the video if you like the video. And from the bottom of my heart, thanks for watching. Later guys.